God. Before we get today's video started, I want to let you guys know that you can get this exact shirt on www.raymondwarner.com for 20% off right now. You can get this shirt as well as all the other older designs. So it's this shirt, the bones design, the stitches design, as well as the night llama design. So if you guys have wanted one of these shirts for a really long time and you haven't gotten one yet, cruise over and right now is the time to get one. So go down, click the link in the description, which is www.raymondwarner.com. Dot com, dot com. Grab a couple of them because they are cheaper right now. But as soon as these things are gone, that's it. I'm not making them anymore. So if you guys want one of these, go now. All right, so let's move forward with the vlog. Oh, today we're going to be talking about how to make your scooter sound like this all the time. There's a few different perks about having a scooter that's dialed all the time. Number one, your scooter actually lasts longer when your scooter is dialed. And when we're saying dialed, for those of you guys that don't know, dialed means tight. Now, why does it last longer? Now, the reason that your scooter will actually last longer when your scooter is dialed is because parts that shouldn't be moving around all the time aren't. For example, your headset. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know about headsets is they're actually a lot more fragile than you think. They are supposed to spin and they are supposed to take a good amount of pressure, but not a ton. For example, if I dropped this headset right now, if I just took it from this high and dropped it, it, it would last just fine. But if I threw it down, if I actually gave it a little bit of force, that headset bearing is probably not gonna last for very long. It might last through like two, maybe three actual drops. But if I take a wheel and throw it down like that, of course it's gonna last for a lot longer. That's because there are very, very small components inside of this very tight bearing. These little tiny components are supposed to stay as tight as possible. They're not supposed to be moving around. Headsets are not supposed to be moving around all, like they're not supposed to be wobbling around and hitting onto um, actual other parts of the deck because they're metal, they're fragile, and they can be broken really easily. Let me show you an example. So we're gonna use my signature AOS V4 limited deck. If you guys wanna get one of these decks, you can go to www.raymondwarner.com. You purchase one of the decks, it comes signed, and I also sign a poster for you guys that you can only get if you buy this deck. But anyways, let's take the headset cups right now, and I'm gonna actually put one of these headset bearings inside of this cup. When I put this thing in here, it's supposed to be like a pretty tight fit. Not crazy tight, but tight enough to where the headset bearing does not wiggle around a lot. I actually might need to tap this one in a little bit. Now, if you ever have a headset bearing that won't slide in like perfectly, like it's not just falling in there, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So don't get too freaked out about it. If you need to tap your bearing in, that's not that big of a deal. Like I said, this whole area, your whole front end is supposed to be as tight as possible. So if, if this needs to be forced in a little tiny bit, just use a rubber mallet, just like the one that I have right here and just tap it in very slowly. Just take your time. Don't go, don't go absolutely crazy and you'll be just fine. All right, so now my headset bearing is pushed in, it's spinning just perfectly, and it's not moving around, as you guys can see. That's because this bearing is not supposed to move around. So now that we have the top bearing put in there, I'm gonna put the bottom bearing right here. I'm gonna put this one in that bottom cup. See, that one was a little bit looser, which isn't, that's, that's perfect, like it's still really, really tight. It's not wiggling around a lot in the bottom of the deck. It just slides right in perfectly. Now, I'm gonna take this black chrome SOB V3 fork, which I think is really, really sick, and I'm gonna slide it into the bottom right here, just so you guys can see, when I actually put this thing in here, if I push up and I start to spin it, there's not a lot of movement in there other than the spinning. That's what you guys want. So, if but if this thing is moving around a lot, if I bring this fork down a little bit and I start moving it around, that bearing is moving around a lot. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. So, as you can see, if this, if this fork is not super tight in there and it's moving around, just like this, which is not a lot, there's not a ton of movement in there, but there's just enough to where that the, the top of that fork is moving around. That's not good for that headset. That headset will break very, very quickly because everything is not tight like it's supposed to be. That is why I always talk about kids like having their scooters really, really loose, and I always tell them like, dude, why don't you tighten your scoot up? It's gonna make a large difference if you tighten that thing up. 
But today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that if you don't know how. And there's all kinds of things that can actually happen to your scooter to make it sound all weird and get loose. And I know a lot of you guys don't understand what parts are loose or what to do if they are loose, how to tighten them. And after this video, you won't have to take your scooter to a scooter shop and constantly have them work on it. You can do it on your own. Now, I pretty much always keep my scooter as tight as it can possibly be. And when I say that, I don't mean that I tighten my head down like crazy to where it only spins around once and I can't tail up. That's not what I do. I tighten my scooter to, to where it's just perfect, but I work on my scooter every single day, you guys. Every single day. So if you guys see me at the skate park and I ride throughout the entire day and I don't work on my scooter, that's actually really really rare and it, it's most of the time I don't even need to work on my scooters no need to it's not like super loose um, it's not like it's super janky or anything like that it's just it's just something that I've always done because I like when my scooter is at the top of its game like I want to make sure that everything is working correctly I want to make sure that my headset's not about to break I want to make sure that my bearings aren't about to break or if my bearings are broken I want to make sure that I can change them over I think it's a very very important thing to work on your scooter every single day and that makes sure that your session isn't ruined because you get all pissed off about your scooter being all nasty. My scoot, right now it's pretty prime. That is the sound that you want. But I'm gonna loosen up my scooter a little bit, part by part, to show you guys which sounds to look out for and if you hear those sounds, what to do to fix them. Sound number one. That's pretty much the, the most heard sound, and to me, the most annoying sound that I ever hear on a scooter. And it's the, the highest pitched. Now, whenever you hear this sound, it's the wheels. The, mo the very, Pretty much like the loudest sound that you ever hear on a scooter, it's wheels. All you need to do to fix this is check your front and back wheels, make sure they're tightened all the way. And when I say all the way, I mean all the way. Another way that you guys can tell that this is for sure that sound is if you hit your scooter in another spot without actually dropping it on the floor, like this. You can still hear it. That's my front wheel moving around. See if I hit it like this? You guys can hear that noise. Same with the back wheel. It's moving around a little bit. And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because your wheel barely, barely moves and you might not think that it would make that much noise, but if your wheel is moving at all, in, even in the slightest bit, it will make that loud, gnarly noise. I have my six and I have my half inch wrench. Put this thing in here, just to crank her down a little bit. I'm gonna shake it a little bit just to make sure and I can tell that this one is not moving at all. Now I'm gonna turn my scooter around and do the same thing to the front wheel. All right, so now my front wheel is tightened up. I'm gonna knock on that one. All you hear is my knuckles. Now I'm gonna test it out. I'm gonna drop it on the floor and see what kind of sound it makes now. All right, we're back in business. Sound number two. This one's not quite as loud, but it sounds a lot like the wheels. Now, if you listen really quickly, it's not as gnarly. And, and this is kind of considering that you have a nylon brake. If you have a metal brake, if you have like an, a, a chromoly brake, it's probably gonna be a lot louder because it's it's kind of tinging up against the deck. But because this one is nylon, it has a couple, it almost acts like a sound deadener to where it's not quite as gnarly. So when this happens, it's just your brake. Now in my case, tightening the brake is super, super easy. All I need is a five millimeter Allen and all I need to do is tighten this one bolt. You guys might have a four, some of you guys might have a three, even. might have a three even, but usually nowadays it's pretty much gonna be a four or a five. So just go over here, tighten that brake. Don't go crazy with it. Don't don't crank on this thing super, super hard. Barely snug and maybe, maybe like a little bit past, but that's as far as I wanna go. Now I know that this thing is super, super, super tight. Now it's not wiggling left or right, or it's definitely not going back and forth. It's just doing its job and braking. Let's see how this thing sounds now that I've tightened my brake down. Oh God! Better. Sound number three. Now this sound can be a little bit deceiving because it can be a couple different things, but the best way for you to actually find out exactly which one of those things is going on is for you to step on your brake like this, wiggle your bars back and forth, and really keep an eye on your forks. If your forks are moving back and forth, it's your compression. If they're not, and you can see that it's just your bars moving back and forth, then it's pretty much gonna be your clamp. There's gonna be a clamp issue in there somewhere. Now, it can be a couple of different things about your clamp. Number one, one of the things that it could be is if you look back here and you have this gap in between where the back of your clamps are. Um, if, those two, if those two ends of your clamp meet and there's no gap in between there and you can't see your bolts, 
then that means that you have a defective clamp and your clamp is stretched out all the way to the point to where it can't, it can't clamp anymore, it can't tighten anymore, and in that case, you're gonna need a new clamp. On the other hand, if you turn your bars around and you can see this gap on your clamp and there's still plenty of room in there and you can see that you have plenty of room to tighten stuff down, you might just have something as simple as just tightening your clamp a little, a little bit. As your clamp is something that you do want to crank on a little bit. You want to get it a, a good amount past the knuckle. I always put mine like pretty tight just to make sure that nothing's going to fly off or anything like that. My alignment's not going to come off. So if you have a little bit of a gap in there, you're good to go. If you don't have a gap in there, you're not good and you're going to need a new clamp. <sighs> Sound number four. As you guys can hear, it sounds like my scooter is literally about to fall apart. It sounds like it's plastic, there's all kinds of different metal-y kind of sounds going on, and it's just, it's just terrible. It sounds like there's stuff in my bars almost, because my bar is technically moving around. Now, if you hear something like this, as drastic as this, it's always the same answer. And the funny thing about this sound is it's actually really easy to fix, but everybody overthinks it, and they think that if they take something apart, they're gonna break something on their scooter even more, and then they're gonna have to buy some new parts. Don't overthink this, it's super, super simple. To fix this problem, I, I need one tool, maybe two. I don't need a big, I don't need a rubber mallet, don't need any tape, I don't need any bolts, I don't need a flathead, I don't need 409, I don't need any glasses, I don't need this broom, I don't even need a fire extinguisher. All I need are Allen wrenches. What's going on with my scooter right now is my compression is loose. Now, everybody freaks out about this word because it's longer than three letters long. Compression is pretty much an easy way of just saying, I need to tighten them one bolt. To tighten your compression, start off by taking off your bars. In my case, I have two bolts that I loosen. If you have an SCS, it might be a little bit different. You might have four bolts, same idea, just loosen all of them and your bars will slide right off. Just like that. Put your bars aside for now. Now on an Envy, this is called an IHC compression system. Now, it even says it on there, IHC compression system. Now, again, this is the only bolt that I need to adjust right now. I don't need to adjust all kinds of stuff. I don't have to take my headset off. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. I just need to tighten one bolt. You tighten this thing down. Don't worry about any, anything spinning down here. It's okay because you have this, this little slit in your shim. Everything will come together exactly how it needs to. Snug. Now, I'm gonna spin my, my, my fork around a little bit just to see how that's spinning. If I think it's a little bit too tight, I can loosen it. If I don't think it's tight enough, I'll, I'll tighten it up a little tiny bit. And uh, the, the best way that you're gonna be able to find out if you've done it right is when you put it on your scooter and you bounce it, and you bounce it to see if it sounds good, if it's spinning okay. Now this, this is the part that comes loose the most on a scooter. Nine times out of 10, your compression comes loose the most, more than your wheels, more than your brake, more than anything else. As for my scooter, now that I've already tightened up my compression, I know that my wheels are tight, I know that my brake is plenty tight, everything is good to go. All I need to do now is put my bars on and make sure my clamp is completely tightened down and my scooter will be ready to go. All right, and my scooter is all tightened up, ready to go to the skate park, and I'm ready to ride. Do not be afraid to take apart your scooter, you guys. Like, as long as you don't start hammering on stuff, you don't put anything on upside down and start cranking down on anything, you'll, your scooter will be just fine. If you need to save a little bit of money, the best thing for you to do is take your scooter apart, give it a shot, and as long as you don't screw anything up by, like I said, pounding on it or, or putting something on upside down, as long as you don't screw anything up drastically, you can take it to the scooter shop and have them fix it afterwards. They know what they're doing, they're trained professionals, and they will get you riding in no time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully this video helps you fix your scooter when it needs to be fixed before you go to the skate park, or again, if you're riding outside and you just don't know what's going on, Hopefully there's something in this video that you can take, learn, and maybe even pass on to some of your friends. If there's a topic in here that I didn't cover and you guys want to learn more about fixing your scooter, let me know in the comments below what problems you guys are having and I will get to them as soon as I can. But I'm done for the night. I gotta get this video edited. So until next time, I'm out. Later.